Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Neo Systems Coffee Break series on NeoFlow, our standardized, pre-built, best practice workflow solution that builds on Neo Systems expertise in system integration through the Integrify workflow tool. So back in mid-July, we started this series. We're going to run up for the next couple of weeks still, um, discussing each of the nine workflow applications that are within the NeoFlow offering that the Neo Systems BPI team has developed. Uh, so if you haven't been here before, uh, make sure you post into the Q&A section. Uh, we can make sure you get a link to the other, to where to find the other recordings. Uh, but what you, what you may have missed um, has been payables, billing, vendor maintenance, vendor ratings, employee management, journal entry up until now. Today, we're going to talk about financial statement approvals. Uh, and then we'll continue with employee workforce next week. And then we'll wrap it up with travel authorization after that. My name is Marty Herbert. I am the practice lead and senior director for the BPI team. Today, we're joined by Matt Yinger. Good morning. Good morning, Marty. How are you? Good, good, good. So as our audience is starting to find out and, you know, really kind of coming to grips with what is this NeoFlow thing, um, it's really all about standardizing our processes uh, and, and providing some good baselines. So each of these workflows really provides exactly that. It, it provides a good standard, a good baseline, best practice, um, but it also has the ability to be configured further to handle those specific items for each of our clients that may be giving them the most problems. So today, while we talk about financial statement approvals, I'm kind of struck by how this one serves as a really great baseline. It's been one that we've been developing for a long time. It also gives us the ability to rapidly deploy it um, and, and really kind of get clients comfortable in a, very, in a very easy manner with Integrify as a workflow tool, and then also the Neo flows themselves as, as solutions to a lot of their processing, uh, business process problems. So, so Matt, as the primary builder for, for this process in particular, maybe you could just kind of start out by walking us through step-by-step step what happens in this process uh, for financial approvals. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> you have um, a requester starting the process. And basically when they start the process, they um, are brought to a form. The form will auto-populate with the current um, month and year to serve as a period for the given financial statements. Um, you will select whether or not you want to um, <clears throat> uh, send FYI copies um, to, certain to certain recipients uh, before or after approval. Um, and you can select as many recipients as you'd like for before approval or after approval. Um, and then finally, you get to attaching your financial statements. Um, we have about 12 that we found to be um, the ones that our clients want to seek approval on uh, most frequently. Um, but, you know, that number can, can change if you'd like. You, we can include additional, we can subtract some, we can, we, basically we can include whichever financial statements you, you would like for approval. Um, we have you know, some, some set requirements that we have in the process that can also be changed. Um, but as of right now, we have three required statements being the income statement bal balance sheet and a statement of indirect expenses. So um, you know, those requirements can be configured you know, with just a couple of clicks depending on which financial statements you want to keep required, you want to make optional, things like that. Um, and that's kind of it for the requester. The requester just attaches financial statements, chooses who they want to notify, if they want to notify anybody before or after financial statement approval saying, just so you know, I'm sending financial statements through for approval. Once that happens, if the requester selected that they want to send FYIs to recipients before approval, those recipients are notified with a, with a notification that we've built out, but, but can also, again, be customized. Um, just indicating that, you know, whoever the requester is has initiated uh, financial statements processing. Um, this notification was sent prior, prior to approval. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear the sirens in the back of my microphone. <laughs> um, 
just, you know, if you have feedback, put it in the discussions tab. Here are some comments. If the requester left some comments. Um, and then it goes to the financial statements approval. Um, the, the financial statements approver um, in our pre-built process is a static approver um, who, you know, generally we've seen amongst clients and um, through working with our um, managed account um, department, we've just kind of found that it's pretty much the same person who approves these from period to period. So the approval um, option goes to the same person each time. If you'd like for that to not be the case, we can have dynamic um, assignments of these approvals as well. But this approval really is just an approval in its most basic form. You have all of the financial statements that the user attached. Um, you, can, you can choose to approve the attachments or send it back to the requester for rework. Um, if you send back for rework, you're required to um, include some comments about what, what needs to be reworked. Um, or you can also um, attach some rework attachments. So for example, if the approver went in and made a couple of changes to the balance sheet, they could come in, select rework required, and in rework attachments, attach the revised balance sheet, for example. Um, if the Approver selects rework required, goes back to the requester, requester makes some changes, sends it back to the approver, you know, happens until the approver says that the financial statements have been approved. Once they're approved, any FYI copies that are designated to be sent after approval are sent and the, and the uh, request is complete. That's kind of all there is. It's just a, here's some financial statements, are they good or not? If they are, great. If not, make them good. And that's about it. Yeah. So it it so you, I mean there's there's a lot. It, it's funny how small the process is and how much there is to kind of unpack about it a little bit. But you know, I, I know we talk about FYI. You know, kind of who who might need to see it and doesn't actually have to weigh in. Right. Um, but you know, in terms of auto populating and that kind of thing, you know, it kind of kind of gets behind the scenes a little bit about you know about what does Integrify do. You know, in terms of being able to capture what is the current date and figure out what the current period is, but that that's that's something too that with each of these we can also configure that that, you know, hey, we're going to populate it with today, but with today's period. But if you want to be able to change it, because oops, maybe we're behind a little bit and we want to submit last last month's financials, we can also get those right. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah, absolutely. The great thing about this, and you know, we were kind of talking about this yesterday, um, was that it's it's a very baseline kind of process and. It, and it's simple. It is absolutely a simple process. But also, if you, you know, if you if you start using this process and you say, you know what, we might need a couple more things to it. We might need X, Y, and Z functionalities added to it. This serves as a really good springboard to that kind of customization. It works really well from a standpoint of, okay, how about now we introduce, you know multiple approvals, or if we want to be able to um, search for financial statements directly from cost point, for example, like the, the, those kinds of customizations, little things that, you know, your company does that other companies might not. Well, and, it, and, and it's amazing too, you know, you talk about such simple processes, um, you know, and, and just my, you know, with, with my background in, you know, kind of DCAA and audit and all of that, um, you know, one of the other things that, you know, a lot of the time people don't think about is, you know, well, I mean, we're always thinking about it, but they don't really think about in terms of business process are things like your internal controls and your Sarbanes-Oxley uh, compliance, and, and even and even at some level, um, your internal controls as they relate as they relate to um, government contracts compliance. And, and I know that that's one of those you know, with with most of our clients, it, it's a constant, right? We're we're always dealing with compliance issues, and and yes, that's why we need it, right? This is this is one of those processes that documents something that is so fundamental to the way that we do things. You kind of forget about it, you know, and, and yes, we do this because we want to make sure we're, we're financially healthy and those types of things, but we also want 
like like what Integrify does with the Neo flows is it documents every step of the process. Like you you know you mentioned the versions that are attached and those kind of things. It's capturing every version of that process. So I and that's kind of the you know that I, I know that's kind of the why you know the the fundamental baseline why as a government contractor do I care. But I know one of the other things, you know, internally as we did, you know, it's kind of that nuance of why, you know, why did why did Neo Systems decide to do this? So maybe talk a little bit about, you know, why why this process, being as simple as it is and as important as it is, why specifically did it actually come about with in, internally and, and for us to build it out like this? Right. Yeah. I mean, so we at Neo Systems, and you know, you you, you I think you speak to this at least on a weekly basis. We're, we're always looking for consistency in its utmost form. We, we want to use processes and do things in a consistent, repeatable, accurate manner. So when it comes to something like financial approval and, you know, just is here's some financial statements, they need to be approved. We're going to do it the exact same way every time. And we found, you know, over the span of the last eight years doing this with managed account clients is that they, they have found this to be valuable in the way of having something consistent and accurate and repeatable and also serve as a way to kind of train your, um, kind of train your financial analysts as well. Like this is kind of what an approved financial statement looks like versus something that I would send back for rework. And so you can kind of shape that kind of performance in a way so that you can, so that you're getting the best thing that you can from, from them every time. So when, you know, we, we were trying to create a standard basically for all of our mass clients, managed account services. So if a new managed account client came on and they said, we need, you know, this, this, and this. And one of those was, was financial statement approvals. We wanted the ability to say, we have a financial statement approval process and it's yours. If you need further customization from kind of the baseline we're giving you, we can do that too. We can do that without a problem because we've done it a bunch of times before, but also we have seen the kind of customizations that people built in and have built it into the baseline so that when there's when there's some things that we've seen multiple times that people want, like the FYIs, for example, we originally didn't include those FYI notifications, but we saw several times that a bunch of managed account services uh, clients wanted to include those FYI, you know, notifications to, you know, certain users. So we said, okay, we'll include it in the baseline. And that's kind of what we do, not with just this process, but with all NeoFlow processes. We we ensure that we stay up to up to date, I guess, is kind of the term I would use on, you know, what cl what clients are using these processes for and how how they develop them to best suit their needs that, are, you know, are pretty ever changing right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely, it, it, especially right now, I, you know, it, and, and I think I think consistency and standardization of process is, is really, you know, something that we hear more and more every day and but i but i do like that you also mentioned that continuous improvement right that that the feedback loops that are built into each one of these neo flows really helps not just the process and hey we need to document why this happened but to your point it also helps with hey i'm getting this version back and now the last three times i've i've pre i presented this the first on the first go round it got kicked back to me for the same reason. So it also helps that now I can see why was it sent back and 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 actually have a way to be able, I mean, number one, to report on it, right? So maybe as a manager, I can look back at that and go, hey, I see it was sent back for the same reason. Maybe I need to provide more training in that area. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, but also I think, you know, just from a from from that standpoint always evolving the process you know you, you talked about you know we put this process into place eight years ago it was much different then um and and when we when we first set out to create the financial statement process it was really internal and mass and all of that um so you know as we've gotten more feedback 
so I, when we kicked off this Neo Flow initiative to to really start building out, you know, these standardized processes to to give to our clients, um, how how long did it take? Do you, do you remember the conversations that we had um, initially with, you know, kind of how you know what this should look like now that now that we're going to take it out and and really standardize it? How, you know, do you remember how long that actually took? Um, I mean, my when you first started asking that question, my inclination was weeks and it turned into months as you finished asking the question. Um, so, you know, it went through a lot of iterations with, you know, talking to each um, client and talking to our, you know, VPs who manage each of those managed account clients um, and the things that they like about it, areas of improvement that they want to see um things like that and we we really kind of synthesized all of that feedback and information into okay how many people asked for you know improvement x improvement y improvement z and is it is it enough to justify adding something to the baseline that wouldn't complicate the process and kind of take away from the actual purpose of the baseline, because it is a baseline and it should serve as a baseline. And we want to be able to, you know, apply it across the board as much as possible. So if there are, you know, common um, functions that we could apply to it to make it better, we did. And so, I mean, I, I, I would say it took several months to get there just because we talked to so many people and we got a lot of feedback and, you know, really a lot of that time was spent kind of sifting through it to see what, 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 what we can reasonably add to a baseline process versus what would be a more custom solution to that client that they wanted to see. So, well, and the great thing now is that now that we have such a great working baseline, we can, you know, implement it in like a day and a half. Yeah. So. I, you know, once we, once we get in there and, you know, have access to your Integrify system, I mean, if that's your starting point, your ending point is probably at noon the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I know, and I know that that was one of the biggest, that was one of the biggest pushes for, you know, for going through the hard knocks that we went through with each of these, you know, cause I, I mean, there's really, there's really years of experience behind every one of these, uh, every one of these Neo flows. And I know that our biggest goal was to get every one of them under two weeks. And this is one of those that, you know, is really day, day and a half, you know, and, and we walk you through it. We show you what it looks like, you know, what edits do you want? Do you want to move something on the screen? Let's go ahead and do that. And, you know, and then flip the switch ready to go. So, you know, after, you know, after taking our knocks and kind of getting it built out, you know, I, I think, you know, really what's the biggest pain point, um, you know, that this is solved? What's the coolest part that you've heard from users? I mean, it, again, it, knowing that it's a, it, it, it's a pretty mundane, I guess, task at some level, but knowing the impact that it has, again, with all of the compliance and, and, and standardization, you know, what, what are some of the things that you've heard about this? Um, and, and just a quick reminder, as, as he's getting ready to answer that, if you do have any questions about this process or anything, make sure you go ahead and put those in the Q&A section. Uh, we will be addressing those in just a second. But yeah, so what what's the coolest part? What, what have you really heard from users? Yeah, absolutely. So um, something that a lot of users like about this process that I, um, that I took care to add to the baseline, you know, once we talked to people, um, was the dynamic naming of the process. I basically, all I really did was say, okay, name this process once the requester completes their task with data from that task and say that it's financial statements processing from this period. And that's all. But it goes a really long way when you're trying to find, you know, the approval process from a specific month from, you know, whether it be six months ago, six years ago, you know, like so some of our clients ha have been using this for that long. Yeah. And so when they're looking to find that that data, that information, um, it, it becomes much easier to find it, you know, instead of sifting through, you know, 50 or so requests if you've been doing it for a long time. Knock, um, knock, the auditors here. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, and that's another thing is that it it 
it captures every step of the process in a lot of detail. And it goes into the granularity of here are the attachments from the first time the requester submitted it. Here are the attachments from the second time the requester submitted it after um, reworked comments from the approver. Here's a third time that the approver sent it back and said, do this, this, and this. And then here are the third version of the attachments. So it, it provides a really comprehensive view of every request of everything that went into each step of the request. It timestamps everything. Um, it tells you who did what task, you know, it, it provides the level of, of, gran of granularity that is required for a lot of compliance stuff like that too. Yeah. So a lot of our clients are saying, you know, like, you know, we just kind of used to send this via email and say, Hey, are these good? Yeah, they're good. Okay, great. See you next month. So when somebody comes knocking on your door and they say, we need to see your financial statement approvals, you know, you don't want to be searching your, you know, undoubtedly massive outlook inbox for one specific <laughs> email about financial statement approval. Yeah. So, so the, I think the ease of revisiting previous requests um, was a big thing. Um, I mean, another thing that was small, but significant was some, some clients had, a, had an unnecessarily long turnaround time for something like this. Simple, but you got to do it every month. And so that kind of thing gets, you know, slid down some people's priority lists because, you know, we're all, we're all very busy. And, you know, when you're not on a meeting, you're, you're doing some high priority work. So these like monthly approvals where you just got to check a box kind of slip your mind. So we set up reminders for that approval task. And those reminders are again, customizable. We can customize them so that, you know, if it takes, you know, three days, you, we send an email and poke the approver and let him know, Hey, it's still in your, still in your task queue. It's, you know, ready for your approval. And some that, you know, need a little more encouragement. We've seen that too, where, you know, we'll send them one every four business hours yeah. just because, you know, it's, it's a financial statement approval. Right. All you got to do is look at them and say, it's okay. So, right. you know, we can, we can really customize how you want to handle it. Um, you know, from an approval standpoint and also from a customization standpoint. Yeah, it, I, 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 I kind of chuckled to myself a little bit whenever, uh, whenever you mentioned, you know, Outlook and trying to find something. I, so I went <laughs> over and I checked real quick and ju just in my inbox, I, there, now these aren't all new, but I have 1300 emails sitting in my inbox. So I'm pretty sure that if I needed to find something, that search feature is only going to be so, so good at trying, if I was, if I was a financial statement approver, uh, that's certainly not going to be something I'm going to find easily. No, um, and like my, my <laughs> Outlook also, I think gets rid of emails after a certain number of days yeah, that it was sent. So I mean, I don't think I could find something <laughs> from a year and a half ago in my mm -hmm. Outlook inbox. I'm pretty sure Outlook just cleared it out. So, yeah. you know, if an auditor comes knocking on your door, I need your financial statement approvals from the last three years yeah. and you're relying yeah. on Outlook, you're probably not going to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at the time, I'm looking at the Q&A section, doesn't look like there's any questions coming in. Um, but, you know, again, I, you know, I always, I always like to make sure we encourage everybody, um, you know, if you do have any questions after the fact, uh, reach out to us, uh, grow ahead at neosystemscorp.com. Uh, we'll be able to answer questions about this process or any other, any other processes that we've talked about from NeoFlow uh, or even Integrify. Um, you know, we can, we can answer all your questions for that. Uh, otherwise, uh, just a reminder, next week is employee workforce, uh, and then after that, it'll be travel authorization. So uh, same time, same place, next Tuesday for another coffee talk. Uh, thanks, Matt, for coming along for the ride and, and telling us all about financial approvals, and we will see everybody next week. Thanks very much. Have a good day, everybody.